This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hello, my friend. It's Julianne Condia, the host of Rewritten. I am currently sitting outside soaking up the sun and if you hear some birds chirping or an airplane flying by or maybe a friendly neighborhood dog barking, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a picture of where I am right now. It is November. (laughs) It is beautiful here in Silicon Valley. So sending you all the warm vibes to all of my central east coast livers. I am really grateful that you tune in to Rewritten. Whether you stumbled upon this or a friend shared it with you, I love, love, love that you're tuning in. I just have this desire to empower women to get fit in every area of life. I think we all have so much potential. I think that whatever it is you want to do, you can do it. However you want to live, you can do it. And I think that what we value is how we live. And sometimes we get so stuck And we get so complacent. And I think it's because we have this fear of the unknown or the work that it's going to take to get to a certain place. And I heard this once, that you experience the same emotions whether you hit a goal or don't hit a goal. You experience the same thing. So you have a high, you have a low, you can feel stressed, you can feel anxious, you can get excited, you can feel feel so filled up with joy and it doesn't really matter if you hit the goal or not. And I think that that is really powerful because sometimes people can get so defeated if they do not hit a goal. And I think life is about those emotions and those feelings and it grows us and it shows us that we can endure a lot and We can experience growth in many different forms. And friend, I just want you to feel alive. I don't want you to feel blah. I don't want you to feel bored. I don't want you to feel um, so comfortable that you don't experience this thrill of change. I get it. It can be super hard and challenging. And where can I find the time? You feel so exhausted. But I think that you can feel so energized and so energetic and that's how I want you to feel. I want you to feel so good in your skin. I want you to feel so good in your relationships and so good about the work that you're putting into the world. So thank you for being a part of Rewritten. It's amazing to have you here and I love connecting with hardworking women. A mantra that I have, especially for mentoring women or business or ideas or entrepreneurship, is hard working women flow freely to me because I want to work with the woman who will do it anyway. The other day, I hosted a webinar uh, to give women information and an idea of what our team is like and what this business is like and how they can fit into their life. And someone wrote, I'm just so on the fence. And what I said back to her, I said, make a decision. What is your best case scenario? Go with that. Instead of just thinking about why we can't, why we shouldn't, why this is hard, why we might fail, why we may not follow through, who knows, the unknown, it's scary, what if people judge me? What if you just start thinking about the best case scenarios in life? So when we moved across the country, it wasn't, let me think of all the bad case scenarios that brought us here. No way. It was the best case scenarios. And even though it was hard, even though it was difficult, we always thought about, we're going to figure it out. And so being on the fence doesn't feel good. That just doesn't feel good when you're indecisive. But when you make a decision, you start to get massively obsessed with that decision and you start focusing on the energy towards what you need to do next after making that decision. And I just feel like we put too much weight on doubt and too much weight on fear and too much too much doubt on indecision that we miss out on amazing opportunities because we don't give ourselves enough credit. 
friend, start giving yourself more credit. You have air in your lungs. You have life to be lived. Give yourself more credit. Trust that you have everything to figure out whatever it is that you need to figure out. I really, really believe that. So I want to get into some tips that I have for you today on my most days things. (laughs) It's kind of a mouthful. But the things I do most days, if I had to pick five habits that I do almost daily, I'm not going to say every single day. I'm not perfect. I have blah days. I have weird things happen or I'm not feeling it or whatever. I definitely don't rely on willpower. That's for sure because I love cupcakes <laughs> and I, I call myself couch to coach. I still love the couch. Let's be real. But I rely on want power. I always think about what my future self needs of me and I need to show up for her right in order to get there. But my most days things, the things that I do the most that the five top things, no matter what, say I get in these five things, like that is great. If I get in more, amazing. But these five things are non-negotiables in my life of living well, living healthy, living happy, living fulfilled, living present, living motivated, living inspired, living as a go-getter, action taker. So number one would be move my body. And that can look different on different days. Trust me when I say that. It doesn't always mean a workout that I follow or it needs to be an hour long or 30 minutes or a calendar-based workout. It can just simply be stretching. Or I love taking walks with Eric, Wyatt, our dog, and our daughter, Faye. It is probably one of the things I look forward to every single day. So before Faye was born, we would take him to the park and I hope he didn't hear me say that. He would get so excited. So we would do that or we'd go on a hike or we would just go around the block, but just getting my body moving. And another thing Eric and I have done is that we'll set timers every 30 minutes and we'll yell out squats and we'll have to do some squats to get some movement in. And I just feel like When you change your physiology, you get more inspired, you're less anxious, and you get your your blood pumping and flowing, and it's better for your brain. So non-negotiable for me is moving my body. A lot of, I guess sitting is the new smoking, and I work from home, and it's really easy to sit a lot, and I need to work on this, but I'm trying. (laughs) But as a teacher, you're on your feet 24-7. Number two would be grow my mind or faith and or faith. And so for me, I love the first five app and that is a five minute devotional. You can actually get the experience guide and I love the experience guides. Like I, I love them. There's been some really powerful ones. There's been ones that have been hard to go through, uh, but it aligns with the first five Or I love listening to Pastor Stephen Furtick with Elevation Church on YouTube or podcast, Craig Rochelle, Life Church. And it's definitely more convenient in my life to listen to a podcast or YouTube than to read a book at this stage and season in my life, but still love it. And then growing my mind. I'm obsessed with reading. Again, this stage and season is a little bit different having a three-month-old, but listening to Audible, listening to YouTube is a huge thing that I do, or podcasts. And I just, I'm really obsessed with thinking better because I know if I can get out of my head, I can pursue a lot. Third is make one connection a day. Whether that's calling a family member, texting a friend, reaching this out to someone on social media, just make a connection and not living on a lonely island. Maybe it's connecting with Eric, it's connecting with a friend for with coffee, but it's making at least one connection a day. I really do believe we were created by God to have connection and community, and that matters to me a ton. The fourth thing that I do most days, and this is definitely a big one, is I drink a ton of water. I stay hydrated. It is so vital, so important, so good for your brain, so good for your body. Staying hydrated, it keeps you alert, it keeps you um healthy in my opinion. So I drink a ton of water. I don't set time 
timers or anything like that with drinking water. It's just on my mind. So the first thing you can start with is take your body weight, divide that in half, and that's the amount of ounces you should have every single day. So that has been helpful for me. And then the last thing that I do most days is gratitude. I lately have been, well, actually I started again today is writing down what I'm grateful for. I used to be a lot better at that as writing it down. It's definitely something Eric and I ask each other. What are you grateful for today? Uh, we definitely love asking that question together, whether it's before bed or usually on our walk actually. Uh, but just listing gratitude. I think when you can be in a grateful state, you have less burden when you live in a grateful state you see more potential when you live grateful you just have this ease in your heart where it's a less elephant on your chest if that makes sense so that's been really powerful in my life those are my top ways of of habits that I do daily that if I just get those five in I would call that like a really a decent day. I obviously love setting goals and doing that, but sometimes on your way to goal setting, it doesn't just happen. And I just feel like creating strong habits creates more accountability and consistency in your life. So friend, I hope this was helpful. I would love how to hear, hear how this spoke to you. Screenshot this, upload it to Instagram, tag me, message me. I would love to chat at Julianne Condia, juliannecondia.com. Thank you for tuning in to Rewritten. I appreciate you. If you have not yet rated this podcast, it takes five seconds. If you could just go into the podcast app, type in Rewritten, and just leave a review, rate it. That would be so amazing. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.